how the heck is it March already? QuiltCon has come and gone, and I'm left sitting here literally having fear of missing out because I thought I wasn't going to go to Phoenix, but now I'm really reconsidering whether I want to go to QuiltCon in 2025 or not. Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and normally I would be taking this opportunity to bring you a vlog recapping all of my quilty progress for the month of February. I'd be talking about my starts, my finishes, lessons learned, and some behind the scenes information. But I didn't start anything. I didn't finish anything. I do have some lessons that I learned, but I figure I'll save that for March's vlog when I actually have some finishes to show you. So this whole video is going to be behind the scenes. What has been going on in the world of Becca? Oh boy, do I have an update for you. We're going to talk about my experience with QuiltCon. QuiltCon this year, 2024, was held in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is my second year going to the event, and I am just absolutely gobsmacked with my entire experience. There are four things that I want to talk about. The first one is the quilt, because duh. The second one I want to talk about is the workshops and the lectures. The third will be the vendors, and then we're going to wrap it up by talking about my favorite part, the people. So let's just jump right into it and get to the quilts.
Those quilts were so beautiful, so powerful, so inspiring, so motivational. All of the adjectives, you can put them right here. One of these days, I hope, I hope to be able to have a quilt that is honored to be hung in the halls of QuiltCon alongside all of those very talented quilters. That's a goal for future, Becca. Let's stick to this year's QuiltCon. Next thing I want to talk to you about are the workshops and the lectures. As you may remember from some of my prior videos, last year when I went to QuiltCon, I overdid it with the lectures and the workshops. I signed up for the all access lecture pass because I didn't know which lectures I would want to go to and I didn't want to make a decision before I signed up. So I spent $240 for an all access lecture pass. And you know how many lectures I went to in 2023? Zero, I went to zero. So this year I decided to not get that pass. Last year, I also chose to take multiple workshops. And some days I even had two workshops, one in the morning and one in the afternoon or evening. And by the time QuiltCon 2023 was winding down, there were workshops that I paid for that I never even went to because I was so exhausted. So this year I went to the other extreme and I took zero workshops. My intention going into QuiltCon 2024 was to do no workshops, no lectures, but a couple of weeks before QuiltCon, I decided to add in a few lectures and I thought that was great. I aimed to take only one lecture a day. I did not want back-to-back -back lectures and I didn't want multiple in a day, but I was willing to spend one hour a day listening to a lecture. So I found a topic on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and I forewent Sunday where I was interested in the lecture, what the speaker would have to say. I took a lecture on how quilting is a form of therapy, and I absolutely subscribe to that theory. I took another lecture on how to find inspiration in everyday objects around you in the natural world, and that left me walking out of that lecture looking at everything at QuiltCon with a different perspective. And the third lecture that I paid for but sadly didn't go to was one that was supposed to help you find a way to quilt your quilt. It was how to find a quilting plan for your project and time just got away from me. I didn't get to make it to that lecture but it was one that I was very interested in. Fortunately, I just spent two weeks with a good friend who is a wonderful long arm quilter, and I feel like I've picked up some inspirational tips from her, so maybe that made up for it. In the future, would I recommend taking lectures and workshops? Yup. I would just caution you, make sure that you prioritize whatever is most important to you. If it's more important that you see all the quilts, make sure you set aside time for that and then carve in some time for a class or a lecture. Maybe be aware of what you're capable of. For me, I know my limit is probably going to be one lecture a day, depending on what topics are being shared. Might step that up to two. And if I'm doing a lot of lectures, I'm probably not going to want to do the workshop. It's a give and take. You got to find what works for you. While I was at QuiltCon, I was chatting over text with a friend who was asking how the vendor situation was. I don't know where she got her intel, but she heard that the vendor booths were empty. That wasn't my experience. The vendor booths were packed and there were long lines, lots of things to buy, lots of really good deals to be had, and lots of lines to stand in. I did love one particular booth. I stopped by the Juki booth, who was actually sourced by Sewing in Carolina, I think, and I bought a new Juki. You can see her here. I decided to lean into a Juki TL18 because ultimately I wanted a second machine for myself. I have one machine in my sewing room and I have another machine for my mom and any guests that come by, but that's my mom's machine and I want her to be able to work. So I got a TL18 and now I have the Juki 2010Q, which I've affectionately referred to as Bubba, as my backup machine or my guest sewing machine. So now my mom can have her own independent machine. I have a guest machine or a backup machine and I have a new primary machine. And because all of the Juki TL machines are basically the same machine, just with minor differences, they both fit my furniture exactly the same and the presser feet are all of the same. All the things are the same. So I should be able to continue moving forward on any deadlines or commitments that my brand has even when one of the Jukies has to be in the shop. That's important to me. 
The people are honestly the thing that I love most about QuiltCon. And it is the single-handed thing that is making me sad to think about missing QuiltCon in Phoenix 2025. Whether you're going to QuiltCon with quilty friends that you already have, you're looking to get a picture taken with a celebrity, or you're just looking to connect with other quilters, maybe even make some new friends. This is the place to do all of the above. This year, I got to meet some celebrities that I have been fangirling over for a very long time. I got to connect with some folks that I met last year and continue those relationships. And I got to hang out with some quilty friends that I already know. Some of those people I met in person for the very first time. This was an amazing event. And I do want to say really quickly, thank you all of you that watch my content and came up to me at QuiltCon. You'll never know how much that small interaction meant to me. I had 150 stickers to give away at QuiltCon to any subscribers that knew me. I fully expected to leave QuiltCon with extra stickers. And in my head, I thought, well, I can just take the number that I have left over, subtract that from the 150, and I'll know how many people I met. That wasn't the case. I ran out. You guys, I ran out of stickers before QuiltCon was over. That was such an endearing thing for me that I, I don't even have words for it. So thank you if you were one of the few that stopped by and said hi, told me that you watched my content, took a picture with me, gave me a hug, shook my hand, gave me a fist bump, whatever the case may be. But also, if you were one of those so celebrities that I've been fangirling over. Thank you for taking your picture with me. Thank you for interacting with me. And thank you for allowing me to watch your content. You guys, I have nothing else to say. I'm just going to end this video here, but I'm going to give you a little bit of music and some pictures of some of the wonderful interactions that I had at QuiltCon. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you guys all next week. Bye! This is as good a day as any To start the rebuilding of life the roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin Beginning to thaw Bye.
there's no time to borrow today Well something's gotta give today It's a good day to 